All right, folks, it's time to take a tour of the culture in deconstructing the culture because it's a Friday. So we're going to do a bunch of cultural stuff here. I want to begin with a clip of Jimmy Kimmel that is quite astonishing. We've had a spate of celebrities in the United States traveling to foreign countries recently and saying kind of wild things about those foreign countries. So obviously we had Tucker Carlson going to Russia and declaring that he was astonished by the Aldi's style shopping carts and by, you know, like escalators that carried shopping carts and then being astonished by exchange rates. That, that, that was weird and that was strange and a little bit wild considering that Russia is a very poor country and these things are all available in like half the supermarkets in the United States. That was strange. Jimmy Kimmel went to Japan. And you know what he noticed about Japan? The same thing that everybody notices about Japan, which is it is super clean and well-ordered. Here was Jimmy Kimmel being astonished by the cleanliness of Japan. But now after traveling to Japan, I realized that this place, this USA we're always chanting about, is a filthy and disgusting country. <laughs> we were in Japan for seven days. Not only did I not encounter a single dirty bathroom, the bathrooms in Tokyo and Kyoto are cleaner than our operating rooms here. <laughs> Everywhere you go, the bathrooms are clean, they don't smell bad, they have those toilets that wash you from the inside out. <laughs> and not just in a hotel, restaurants, bars, truck stops. I went to two truck stops. I swear to God, the bathrooms cleaner than Jennifer Garner's teeth. The cleanest, <laughs> beautiful. And it's not just the bathroom, there's no litter, people carry their own trash. There are no garbage cans in Tokyo. It's 30 years ago, some terrorists put some like, poisonous gas in some trash cans. They're like, okay, no more trash cans. <laughs> Everybody clean up after yourselves. And guess what? They clean up after themselves. They bring their garbage to their houses. And it's like the whole country is Disneyland and we're living at Six Flags. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about this sort of stupidity. Culture has come as a package deal. There's a mashup of culture and law. Okay. When it comes to Japan, Japan has always been a culture that prizes cleanliness. Not all cultures are the same. Some cultures really don't prize cleanliness, which is why when you go to certain Middle Eastern countries, it's kind of dirty. You go down to Latin America, there are places that are not particularly clean. Not all cultures value cleanliness in the same way that the Japanese do. But there's something else. That then gets embedded in the law. Do you know what the penalty is for littering in Japan? It's called public dumping. You can get up to five years in prison for littering in Japan. In the United States, a cop will not even write you a ticket for littering. <laughs> so I guess we could do that in the United States. We'd give you like five years. In, but I thought that Jimmy Kimmel is in favor of fewer people in prison. And, and law enforcement is bad and the police, they're, they're bad. When he says, you know, it, it's just absolutely anodyne, like there's, it's, it's so clean in Japan. You mean you don't have drug addicts living on the streets in Japan? Maybe one of the reasons for that is because the criminal penalties for drugs in Japan, are extraordinarily tough. If, if you have a small amount of personal drugs in your possession, like a joint, for example, you can get a five-year jail sentence in Japan for that. Is that something Jimmy Kimmel would like? I have a feeling not. I have a feeling that that is not the case. And if you are trading drugs commercially, or drug dealer, or if you even have enough drugs to trade the drugs commercially, then you'll be going to jail for 20 years in Japan. <laughs> So Japan, really big on the, like, you break the rules, you go to jail. So they have very strong culture of the streets being clean. They have a very strong culture of, if you do these things, we will put you in jail. And we're not interested in your jabber about human rights and freedoms and liberties or any of that kind of crap. You are going to jail. You have violated the law, and now you're going to jail. Is that what Jimmy Kimmel wants? Like, he's shocked by the fact that there are incentive structures, and those incentive structures mean fewer people do the thing. If you suggested, by the way, that in inner city, Chicago, south side of Chicago. You litter, you're going to jail for five years. Jimmy Kimmel would call you a racist for that. But that's the actual law in Japan. Or for example, let's take a look at the fact that Japan has maintained this culture of cleanliness. How could they do this? Why is it that this unique culture in Japan has a very unique culture? If you watch any TV show about Japan, it is very foreign to the United States. I've never been there. Most Americans have never been there, but it's a very, very different, because cultures are different all over the world. And I'm glad that Jimmy Kimmel enjoyed his time in Japan. I'll also point out that Jimmy Kimmel, if he really liked Japan, let's say he wanted to go to Japan and move to Japan, the chances that he would ever become a citizen of Japan are extraordinarily low. In 2015, the number of applications for Japanese citizenship that were approved total in 2015 was 9,400. That is the total number of people who are approved 
for citizenship in Japan. The population of Japan is, by the way, 125 million. So Japan has more than one third the population of the United States and allows like 10,000 people a year to become citizens of Japan. Now, if we adopted that policy, Jimmy Kimmel would call it racist, right? You know how many people become citizens in the United States are naturalized as citizens in the United States every year? Put aside the illegal immigration. Where we're lettering, letting in literally 5, 10 million people over the course of Joe Biden's presidency and illegally. I'm just talking about the people who are actively formally given citizenship in the United States every year. That number is almost 900,000. So we allow in 900,000 people a year to become citizens of the United States. Japan allows in 9,000. Might that have something to do with the cleanliness of its streets? Might that have something to do with the preservation of its unique culture? By the way, the population of Japan by race. Now, I know we're not allowed to say that Japan is a racist country or anything like that, because after all, they're not white people. But Japan, mm, not super friendly toward other races. Here are the ethnic groups in Japan by population. Okay, you ready? South Korean, 0.3%. Vietnamese, 0.4%. Chinese, 0.6%. Japanese, 97.5%. So it is a completely ethnically homogenous land that allows zero immigrants every year and jails you for five years if you put out a cigar on the sidewalk or you drop a cigarette on the sidewalk. And Jimmy Kimmel's like, hey, it's really clean around here. Wow, they have magic toilets. Now, by the way, it's a package deal. It ain't all wonder and joy over in Japan. For example, Japan's economy has totally flamed out. So Japan's GDP per capita, as of about 2000, was equivalent to that of the United States. In 2001, the GDP per capita in Japan was about $34,000, and the GDP per capita in the United States was about $37,000. And if you go back to the mid-90s, when they were in the middle of their big bubble, Japan actually surpassed the United States pretty significantly in terms of GDP per capita. They were up at about $44,000 per capita in 1996. And the United States was at $28,690 per capita in 1995-1996. Today, just remember that number, 44100 GDP per capita, 1995 for Japan. Today, the GDP per capita in Japan is $33,823. So it has actually declined by a quarter over the course of the last 25 years or so. The United States, by contrast, this terrible, horrible, very dirty, no good, very bad country, according to Jimmy Kimmel. We were at $28,000 per capita in 1995. And today we are at $76,000 per capita. We almost tripled it. But obviously Japan is better. Obviously Japan is the big winner. So here's the thing. You don't get to pick and choose the aspects of a culture that you like or the system of law that you like. The same exact sort of freedoms that lead, for example, to the building of, you know, kind of ugly dollar stores in the United States mean that people can buy amazing stuff with less money and have a job. The the same sort of evil church culture that I'm sure Jimmy Kimmel so despises leads to a value system that creates entrepreneurship. And um, meanwhile, he likes the toilets in Japan. So slow clap for Jimmy Kimmel. And it, it is truly amazing how everybody, single factor analysis is the stupidest thing in the world. Like, oh my God, look, there are clean streets in Japan. Yes, of course there are clean streets in Japan. I can explain to you why there are clean streets in Japan, but I don't think you're going to like what I'm suggesting. They do the same thing about Norway. Like, oh, look at Norway. Norway is like an amazing place. Look how, look how beautiful Norway is. Yes, well, the total population of Norway is 5.5 million people. And the population of Norway by race is 81.5%. Norwegian. So, yeah, I mean, if you and if you suggested to to Jimmy Kimmel that what we need in the United States is an ethnically homogenous land like Norway with a giant oil exploration sector. I don't think that he would be super in favor of that. I get. Oh, God, so stupid. So, but, you know, Jimmy Kimmel is a funny man, so we can't we can't pretend that he is supposed to be particularly smart. 20 bucks barely gets you anything these days. You can't fill your gas tank. 
barely get a meal for 20 bucks. Do you know what 20 bucks will get you? From the cell phone company I use, Pure Talk, you can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data for just 20 bucks a month. Pure Talk gives you the same quality of service as your current cell phone provider, but for half the cost. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can switch to Pure Talk and keep the phone and phone number you currently use, or you can take advantage of their great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Making the switch is incredibly easy. Their U.S. customer service team can help you join Pure Talk in as little as 10 minutes. Choose to spend your hard-earned money with a wireless company that shares your values, supports our military and veterans, creates American jobs, and refuses to advertise on, you know, fake news networks. Stop spending a ridiculous amount of money on your phone plan. Go to puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Right now, my listeners can get an additional 50% off their very first month of coverage. That's puretalk.com slash Shapiro. Again, puretalk.com slash Shapiro. I've been using them for years. Their coverage is excellent. And right now, my listeners get an additional 50% off their first month. puretalk.com slash Shapiro. In other show business news, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding Beyonce singing country. Now, I don't care about this like at all, but I am curious as to whether her singing country is good. Now, uh, I have a bit of a guilty pleasure side for, for country music. I like country music, actually. Particularly, I'm a big Brad Paisley fan because I think his songs are clever and his lyrics are clever. But apparently Beyonce released an album. It's largely covers of other country songs. And it's being praised to the sky because, of course, you're not allowed to cross the Queen Bay. The Queen Bay is the greatest person who has ever lived she surpasses all of the religious prophets in her wisdom and joy. And despite the fact that she doesn't write any of her own songs or lyrics, and by the way, has sort of given up the thing that she actually was good at, which is belting. She actually has a tremendous voice, Beyonce. But she sort of gave that up for warbling into a microphone the way that, that so many of the pop stars do. They give up range in favor of, you know, like an octave range where they breathe heavily into a microphone. You know, I felt like we should probably analyze and see whether she's any good or not, because I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't trust the music press because no matter, I mean, she could just put out the worst song in the entire world. She could put out Rebecca Black's Friday and the press would be like, oh my God, this is genius and incredible. So uh, let's give a listen to some of Beyonce singing country. I can easily understand why you're attracted to my man, but you don't want the smoke to shoot your chef with someone. So it's a girl power anthem now. Yeah, this is this is this is not great. Again, Beyonce has a very nice voice. I'm happy to listen to her her voice. Also, the song is about Dolly Parton literally begging another woman not to take her man because she feels outcompeted by the other woman. And now it is a girl power bad b- anthem from Beyonce talking about how if you come for my man, then I'm going to get up in your business. And he seems like he's happily married anyway for 20 years. So what's the song about? I don't even understand what the song is about at that point. The entire original song is about a woman who is concerned that her man is going to be seduced away by another woman. And in this song, apparently, it's just a woman who has no shot with this woman's husband because Beyonce is so awesome. So the song's about nothing. Like, why is she even worried about Jolene? According to Beyonce's lyric... It takes more than beauty and seductive stares to come between a family and a happy man. The games you play are nothing new. You don't want no heat with me, Jolene. Also, we've been deep in love for 20 years. I raised that man. I raised his kids. I know my man better than he knows himself. I can easily understand why you're attracted to my man, but you don't want this smoke, so shoot your shot with someone else. So, and then she says that, I'm warning you, find your own man. I know I'm a queen. So the the whole thing is about how awesome the singer is, which is the complete opposite of the original song, which is stupid and actually undermines the purpose of the original song. You know what would be amazing, honestly? The entire attraction of the original song is about female vulnerability, knowing that the singer is not perfect. And in fact, another woman could theoretically threaten her. And in this song, you're never allowed as a woman to acknowledge any vulnerability at all with regard to another woman. So the song has no meaning. It's, it's exactly the same as it, if you like it, then you better put a ring on it. It's the same as every other message of every other Beyonce song. That she's bad Queen Bay and don't mess with her because she's so tough. Which is stupid. As far as it being a piece of, of country, it kind of doesn't really sound very country to me. 
And again, I'm not like a giant country aficionado, but the fact that there is like an acoustic guitar a little bit doesn't really do it. It's still pretty poppy. She doesn't sing it like a country. So there's no twang to it at all. All right, whatever. Is it the greatest thing in the world? Apparently, it's the greatest thing in the world. I've been told by the media that it is unbelievable. Quote, as a black woman reclaiming country music, she stands in opposition to stereotypical associations of the same genre with whiteness. Cowboy Carter was five years in the making. A direct result of what Beyonce has called, quote, an experience that I had years ago where I did not feel welcomed and it wasn't, and it was very clear that I wasn't. Most likely in a reference to a 2016 CMA's performance that resulted in a racist backlash. So apparently now we have to pretend that this is like amazing. What if it's just mediocre? What if it's just like, eh? And the message is stupid. What if that? So, all right. Enough, uh, enough about Beyonce. But again, you're not allowed to cross, cross swords with the Queen Bay or something. If you're like most Americans, you're struggling to make ends meet. Everything is more expensive these days. By the time you pay the bills, fill up the car, go grocery shopping, there might not be much left. You're laying out your credit card for all non-essentials, maybe even some essentials. And last I checked, the average credit card interest rate for Americans is now 24%, which is crazy. How are you supposed to dig yourself out of that debt? If you own a home, I want you to call my friends at American Financing right now. Interest rates have finally dropped into the fives, which is the lowest they've been in a long time. Call American Financing to talk about their refinance options. They save their customers an average of 854 bucks a month by tapping into their home equity and wiping out high interest credit card debt. Think about it. 854 bucks a month is like a $10,000 raise. What a relief that could be for you and your family. Call American Financing at 866-721-3300. Again, that's 866-721-3300. If you call today, you might not have to make next month's mortgage payment. That's 866-721-3300 or visit AmericanFinancing.net. NMLS 182334, NMLSConsumerAccess.org. APR for rates in the fives start at 6.799%. For well-qualified borrowers, call 866-721-3300 for details about credit, costs, and terms. Okay, meanwhile, in other stupid cultural news, apparently a WWE star named Chelsea Green was kicked out of a New York hotel. She was kicked out of the New York hotel because they believed that she was an escort based on her clothing. So apparently she and a friend plan on getting drinks at the Plaza Hotel's Champagne Bar on Tuesday night before seeing a Broadway show, but her plans changed because apparently she was escorted out because of her outfit. An unknown guest allegedly offered Green to get drinks with them, allowing them to pass through security that only further angered the staff. And apparently the staffers yelled at her because they assumed that her clothes, which is a white top, a denim miniskirt, boots and a coat, meant that she was there for more than a drink. And uh, she said that she was upset and that she returned a short time later, and then she was chased out again. So she is, in fact, married, apparently, to her husband, a person named Matt Cardona. Okay, so let, let's see the outfit that she was wearing. Yeah, I mean, she's wearing a jacket in this, so I wonder how bad it is when she takes off the jacket. It, for, for New York, I'm not sure that it counts as, like, she looks like, a prostitute. But again, the fact that we as a society have blurred the line between dress like a prostitute and dress normally uh, is, is more of an indicator of where we are societally than anything else. And I promise you that in the 1950s, there weren't a lot of people who like a lot of women who were work, walking into like a New York hotel going to a Broadway show and they're like, oh man, you look like a that, that wasn't a thing that was happening very often. Like the distinctions between classy dress and prostitute dress were pretty significant. And now we've completely obliterated all of that. So, uh, you know, Hotel workers who are like, you look like you're dressed like a prostitute, and it turns out that she's just a regular person. That says something about how a society dresses, which does speak to where we are as a society, which is that people used to aspire to dress up, and now people aspire to dress down. You see this among billionaires. I made this point before, that if you look back at like the worst times in the 1930s, you look like a breadline in the 1930s, where people are legitimately on the verge of starving. You'll see a breadline, and everybody's in a suit. Many people are wearing ties. And now you have the billionaire class like Jeff Bezos and they're dressed like homeless people. Because there was a time when you aspired to dress well because we understood that dress conveyed a certain message about ourselves. And then again, in our deep desire to separate off from reality and pretend that I can dress a certain way and it doesn't convey certain messages to people. Of course, how you dress conveys messages to people. This is just a perfect, obvious truism. If you are a white coat and you walk into a hospital, people are going to assume you're probably a doctor. And if you wear a tiny little mini skirt and a tube top, then you are giving off a vibe that is not equal to the vibe that a nun would give off. Or by the way, the vibe that like a normal woman would give off if she were just wearing a skirt that was slightly longer 
and that cover and and a, and a shirt that covered her shoulders. Again, you make whatever call you want. I'm just making a serious and obvious point, which is whatever your clothes are, they do convey messages about you. And, and the fact that we have now confused all the messages suggests there's something deeply wrong with our vision of of society and human nature. It's getting a little deep on this story, but you know, honestly, that's kind of the only takeaway. And meanwhile. In a, in a just a horrifying update. I mean, I, honestly, if they can't last, how can anyone? Apparently, Gypsy Rose Blanchard has announced separation for hus- from her husband three months after her prison release. You remember that time when they were celebrated as like one of the great romances of our age? So Gypsy Rose Blanchard announced her split with Ryan Scott Anderson on Facebook. That was three months after she was released from Chillicothe Correctional Center in Missouri after serving more than eight years in prison for plotting to murder her mother with her then boyfriend, Nick Gojon, who is still in jail, by the way. And then they tied the knot in a jailhouse ceremony in July 2022. And then she was out for three months. And she's like, you know what? I think that the weirdo that I married while I was in jail is maybe not my my true love. So, yeah, that, that was that was a romance for the ages. I'm heartbroken. Frankly, it makes me question everything about marriage and love. I just don't know how we if they can if they if that if those lovebirds can't make it, how can any of us? Are you tired of the lies and the twist of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah. Me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 